This lecture is called Marbles of the Gods, the Megalithic Spheres of Costa Rica and Around the World. Now this is a subject I've been researching for, for many years. I visited Costa Rica back in uh, 2012 to investigate these mysterious megalithic spheres that have been found all over that part of Central America. In the image here on the left, you can, you can see Indiana Jones escaping from one of these spheres, which was used as a booby trap um, in the film The Raiders of the Lost Ark at the very start of the film. But in fact, there's a history to these. These are a reality and these do actually exist. It's this area here where most of them are found uh, in Costa Rica, mainly in the southern portion of Costa Rica around uh, Parmesa and Palma Norte and Golfito. Uh, there are about 200 miles um, uh, from San Jose. Some exist in town parks around San Jose and some recreation areas as well as the museums there. But when I went to investigate this, uh, I wanted to kind of just see them in situ, see what the story was with them. There's over, you know, something like 300 have been found or more really in Costa Rica. Some are now in private residences, some got moved, some got destroyed. Um, and I asked David Hatcher Childress, who's done fantastic videos about uh, these, as well as written about them in some of his books. I also spoke to uh, Lee Pennington, who's a researcher who's been down that way. I tried to get advice exactly where to go, and really uh, there was no clear advice. The ones they had seen were mainly around San Jose. Uh, the rest were down south somewhere. So I decided to investigate this for myself um, back in 2012. The first investigation of these mysterious stone spheres was um, undertaken shortly after the discovery by a woman called Doris Stone, a, a relevant name there, who was a daughter of a United uh, Fruit Company executive who were, uh, had farms and plantations of bananas in that particular area. She, re she published a report in 1943 in American Antiquity. And this caught the attention of doctors Mi Mr. and Mrs. Samuel Lothrop, of the Peabody Museum at Harvard University. And in 1948, they came to Costa Rica to investigate these. And they found many of them um, around uh, San Jose, just on display in various places, which we'll have a look at some examples in a moment. Um, but they eventually reported a paper in 1963 on the archeology span of the area. Um, and really not too much information was forthcoming, but here's some photos of them investigating and moving and uh, reconstructing some of the locations here. Additional research was carried out by archaeologist, uh, Smithsonian archaeologist Matthew Sterling, who reported back um, in 1969 and wrote some reports about some of the spheres here. Notably, he was the gentleman who um, popularized and discovered many of the Olmec statues and sites. But they are believed to have been carved anywhere between 200 BC and 1500 AD. Uh, but there's not too much evidence of uh, the actual precise dating because they're often just found in random, what appears random areas. Uh, many of them disappeared after the Spanish conquest. There was many, many more. But there's been pottery and artifacts found uh, of the Aguas Buenas culture, which is around 200 BC to 600 AD. And even some have been found in the Buenos Aires area as well, much later than this. But the main area really is down south. And this is where we're gonna look at mainly in this talk around Golfito, and there's also Parmesa and Palma Norte uh, around this area. But San Jose is where many of them are now on display. Uh, the first European explorer to encounter Costa Rica was Christopher Columbus. In 1502, on September the 18th of that year, he was making his fourth and final voyage to the New World. And he was setting up anchor offshore. A crowd of local Indians paddled out in canoes and greeted him warmly. Um, and basically, uh, the golden bands that the region's inhabitants wore on their noses and around their noses and ears would inspire the Spaniards uh, to call it Costa Rica or the rich coast because of all the gold that was found there. But there were indigenous tribes even at the time that Columbus was there. Uh, and you can see some uh, uh, illustration of painting here from the time uh, that shows this. The East Coast was the realm of the Caribs, while the Barucas, Chibchas and Diqui Delta people resided in the Southwest. 
only a few hundred thousand strong to begin with. Um, after the Spanish colonialism, many of them died through disease and other such things, and also through slavery by the Spanish. Um, regrettably, only 1% of Costa Rica's 3 million indigenous people survived. And nowadays, 98% of the country is mostly white, and most of those are Spanish descendants. But in the 1930s, uh, the United Fruit Company was excavating the fertile, remote farmlands of Costa Rica down near Golfito, Palma Sur, Palma Norte. And as, they, as their work developed, they were building their plantations and factories and so forth. They started discovering these stone spheres, um, just buried in the tropical soil. Many of the spheres were unknown even to the local inhabitants, um, and they could offer no real explanation. Uh, only slowly the information started coming out, but one of the rumors, one of the legends, was that inside the center of them there was treasure or gold, or a precious jewel. So many balls were drilled, uh, dynamited, or cracked open to reveal, actually, they were mainly made of solid rock. Although we'll see in a few instances, there is a, a legend of a black stone being found, or a coffee bean, uh, which often was a black stone inside many of the spheres. And when some of them were cracked open, they actually found this black stone right in the center, which really confused people because it made them think, how would they know that's even there? News of these rock spheres uh, reached the authorities. Specimens were um, taken to the museum. Doris Stone of the United Fruit Company, the daughter of the executive there, photographed them and wrote about them in 1943. And basically, it opened up the whole reality that there was a sophisticated stone sphere-making culture in ancient Costa Rica. So what are they made of? Uh, most of them, or not all of them, but most of them are made of granodiorite, which is a hard igneous stone that uh, comes from the foothills of the nearby Talamanca range. A few examples, a few examples are made of coquina, which is a hard material, a limestone type rock that is formed from shell and sand in beach, beach deposits, which is probably brought from the northern area coasts. But if we go to the museum, we can actually see some of the very interesting other stone artifacts on display there. These were part of the same culture that probably made the spheres. In fact, some theories suggest that some of the spheres were actually placed on these stone kind of stands. You can see the beautiful stonework. This is carved out of solid basalt type rock, similar to the stone spheres, possibly the same type of rock. And you can see um, these were also, they looked like kind of picnic tables or something, but these were actually the stands that often the balls would go on. And you can see this, uh, there's been illustrations where these were found, often they were found buried next to the spheres and so forth. But if you look at the intricacy here, you can see it's really quite remarkable. They were making this out of solid, very hard rock. Uh, and it shows you the sophistication of this culture whenever or wherever they were from. Obviously, there are theories that, that date it back much, much further. There's even suggestions by various researchers like Ivor Zapp and others who believe it was an offshoot from Atlantis or some prehistoric um, megalithic culture who were traveling around the world. There are quite a few myths associated with these. This is actually one of the most interesting spheres. This has actually been broken open and inside it was found this black stone in the center, which legend, legend states was the a mysterious coffee bean, which before that people thought was treasure. Um, it would have taken a long time to make. Um, and you know, imagine trying to carve one of these spheres, considering they range from the size of a, you know, like a tennis ball all the way up to about nine or ten feet across. Some of them are almost perfectly spherical as well. Um, and they would have taken so long to create that people have speculated that they must be thousands of years old and high technology must have been used. Some local legends talk about a magic potion that was able to make the rocks soften. And this, we find similar stories down in the Amazon part of Peru and Brazil. And so therefore the stone could be easily manipulated. Um, other suggestions say, you know, there were nuggets of gold or these coffee beans and the stones would magically form around them. Other legends claim the spheres were part of a game once played by giants that inhabited the earth in a distant epoch and that the spheres represented stars of the constellations of the sky. 
in the cosmology cosmogony of Bribi, which is the shared by the uh, different cultures of that area. They're called Tara's cannonballs. And Tara of Tlechki, the god of thunder, used a giant blowpipe to shoot the balls at the Serkis, gods of winds and hurricanes, in order to drive them out of these lands. So you can see there's many different associations with these particular spheres. This one is an interesting one. It has spirals on it. It has beautiful carvings, um, which could represent, some people say, constellations. We have a theory here that indeed that is the case on this particular sphere. Um, certain carvings on it represent Orion and Gemini and Pla Pleiades and so on and so forth, even Andromeda and numerous other constellations that would be seen from the Southern Hemisphere. This is one of the larger ones. In the background, actually, is just a disc of uh, stone to represent how big the largest one is. Just to get a sense of scale, there's me wearing exactly the same T-shirt um, standing in front of it. This is one of the ones actually on display at the, at the Museum of San Jose. And here we have one of the smaller ones, which is more or less the size of a cannonball. So even when the... Um, Taraba River area and the Talamac Mountains, some 50 miles away, was investigated to look for the quarries. They could find no evidence of the quarries, you know, actually of spheres being removed from the quarry. So it's caused a lot of confusion as to really what these are and exactly where they came from. Some of the other uh, very interesting um, carvings here are of of these funerary boars, these are about eight feet tall, some of these, but there's a very intricate, this is, this is slightly concaved stone, very hard igneous rock, um, basalt type rock, very hard, you can see it here. And these stunning carvings all around the edge with these 3D relief carvings are absolutely, to me, they're absolutely incredible. And these are contemporary with the stone spheres. Here's just one close up of one of the one of the pieces next to it. And when I saw this, it blew me away. It, it, it's almost identical in style and size as the famous critter that was recorded here at Gebekli Tepe in Southeast Turkey. Um, and it's the same quality of workmanship. And to create relief carvings, you remember you have, to, you have to cut away all the stone around it, incredibly hard stone, and then leave this perfect shape within it. We find similar examples at Silustani, for instance, in ancient Peru, around the area of Lake Titicaca, and other much more weathered ones from Silustani here. So I just find it intriguing that we do find these similarities. Uh, maybe they're not connected, maybe they are, but it's worth noting as an anomaly here, because a lot of people don't realize the stone sphere culture of Costa Rica actually has amazing stone carving technologies other than the stone spheres themselves. There's also these very uh, frightening statues. This one's got a Mohican. This one is very reminiscent of some other statues we'll be looking at in a moment. And this guy just looks quite freaky. It's very similar to the statue, a 10,000 year old statue um, called Urfa Man, who was found in San Leo for Turkey. Similar kind of holding his kind of pocket or groinal area. He's got a sort of gormless look on his face. Um, and he's got a stump, just like we find, you know, like that would have been placed in the ground, a very sacred area. We have exactly the same style and they're virtually exactly the same size. A coincidence possibly, but worth noting that there's some very early statues of human beings here in Costa Rica. We also find um, certain serpent carvings. This is from the Vali Chori, this is from Cusco. Um, and so we do find some serpents that we'll look at in a moment in Costa Rica as well. These are just on display, these ones, um, in the San Jose Museum in the garden there. One of the spheres has a hole um, absolutely drilled into it as well, which would have been some kind of drilling technology. We're not sure exactly what that is. Uh, there's various researchers have been looking at this. Uh, one of the leading experts is Iphigenia Quintanilla, Costa Rican doctoral student uh, from uh, Barcelona. She wrote a book about the stone spheres in 2007. The next expert who's worth looking into if you're interested in this is Dr. John Hoops of the University of Kansas. And he believes that they were made by local inhabitants who lived in the area from 800 to 1200 AD. Although there was no written language and there's no record of the stones in their history, 
He still believes that they were formed by granite blocks by successively heating and cooling the outside of the rock, causing it to flake away in layers. Hand tools such as matate would have been used to refine the spherical shape with sand and leather to finish and polish the surface. I don't know about that, but this is an interesting theory nonetheless. Um, this is actually on display just in the local park, one of the local parks in San Jose. Also, it's been said that the construction of the spheres would have required quite a high degree of measurement and mathematics to get the precise uh, spherical shape. So you imagine trying to create that, it would be quite a task, it would be quite a challenge mentally to uh, constantly try and keep it in the right dimensions as you're carving the stone away. Dr. Hoops and now other researchers, uh, these are actually now on the placards at some of the uh, sites where it's in situ, believe they are signs of wealth or status, or perhaps, they're very vague here, uh, part of some religious or ceremonial rituals. No one knows for sure, of course. Um, many of the stones are in danger, many are hoarded and in gardens of the rich um, people in mainly around San Jose. Only 186 can be accounted for, but over 300 have been recorded. Um, often they are dug up um, and moved before any attempt is, to, is made archaeologically of the, the area they were actually uh, discovered in. Even in the town, you can just walk around San Jose, and you can see pictures of these spheres um, in the landscape. Lothrop and others since have speculated that the spheres were probably roughly shaped um, and then polished with smaller stones, with wet sand as abrasive medium. Uh, again, this is similar to Hoops' idea that they were kind of uh, heated and then cooled so the layers would drop off, but again, this is just speculative. The variety of the material is quite interesting. Uh, there's, certain, there's quite different types of rock. You can see very light spheres that are made more of limestone, harder spheres, more basalt type rock. And they're so well known now, I've actually got a picture of the statue and one of the stone spheres on the 5,000 um, uh, note in Costa Rica. But really, if you want to see the spheres for yourself, you've got to get off the beaten track. And you've got to take a very long bus ride down to Palma Sur. There's two areas down here on either side of the main river there, uh, Palma Sur and Palma Norte. I think you stay in Palma Sur, but Palma Norte is where most of the spheres are. This is one of them being excavated about 10 years ago at a site called Finca 6, which is in the area of Palma Norte. Ivor Zapp and George Erickson are two anthropologists who have written a book called Atlantis in America, uh, published by Adventures Unlimited Press. Um, they believe um, there was a highly advanced civilization in Costa Rica, Central America, going up from Mexico all the way down to Peru and Bolivia. And this was part of the culture. And they believe these spheres were astronomically placed. They were also an Atlantean tradition that continued through multiple generations. In their research, they explain um, there was some kind of navigation school and actually the spheres were placed in situ in certain places and moved around. That's why they were spherical. So it'd be like a navigation school where you would plan it all out accordingly. Then you would go out and navigate from there. And the large stone boards we saw with the beautiful carvings around the edge were used as navigational instruments. They would be placed at the front of the boats to maneuver the ship and move it in certain directions. And they were also used as funerary boards a little bit later. So just walking around Palma Sur, you get to see some of these spheres literally outside a Chinese restaurant, uh, which was quite alarming, but they're there. So they've been moved, they've been placed, they're in random places. There's a technical college, has some spheres. This was just over the place uh, from the area we were staying when we were there. Um, and they're just, you know, placed there in, in these concrete kind of um, hold, holders. But we thought, okay, this is interesting, there's one here, but we sort of looked through the fence and we, saw, we thought we saw something in the distance. So we just walked in there and we saw two massive ones, about eight feet tall, just within corrugated iron kind of garages or sheds. And this absolutely stunned us. Then we realized, um, this is how, you can see how big they are just from me standing next to it. Um, and this is, this is really intriguing because these were, you know, before 
these were the corrugated iron uh, sheds weren't there before uh, they, they were doing some construction at the college by the way this is our driver Manuel uh, he was amazing uh, we, we bumped into him it was perfect synchronicity he happened to know where every sphere was in the whole of the area so he was our driver for about four or five days um, I look like a giant next to him, don't I? In fact, that's, that's quite remarkable. But there were two of these very large spheres in the college. These were very accurate, very perfectly spherical, surprisingly so. They really caught my attention. Uh, and I've also put, uh, if anyone's interested, this is the exact location of where these particular ones are. So we have, you have the GPS coordinates if you'd like to visit them. But all around the town there, if you walk, just walk around the town, just try and go on every single street, and you'll, you'll start spotting them around the place. This is in just uh, the main park in uh, Parma Sur. Here's a close-up, again, of one of, the, uh, one of the spheres. And there's uh, Manuel trying to sell us things um, while he was driving us about. But we, we did buy some because he was such an amazing guy. A very reasonable rates uh, for a personal taxi driver. But if you cross over the river and head into Palma Norte, which is just a mile or so away really, you can pretty much walk there. There's old disused train tracks and trains. There's just one lying around uh, in the park there. Another one that's been broken but then glued back together outside a store. Here it is again. Then we have these beautiful trees that are multiple have been painted. You know, I forget the name of these trees, but these are absolutely stunning. For those interested in multicolored trees, uh, this is also the place to go. And then there's a park, the Aspheras, or the Park of the Spheres. Uh, again, this is kind of between, uh, it's, it's just north of Palma Sur, on the way to Palma Norte, on the way to Finca 6, where the main spheres are kept. And there's multiple ones here. You can actually see these scattered around the park. This is like a play park, really. You can see the one over here. And to me, they're, 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 they're very interesting. They're very abstract. They're very bizarre. They're like, they've not got too many carvings on. Some of them have, we'll look at in a moment, the one we saw earlier. But this is more limestone, this one. This is a lighter type of rock. And it's got this strange kind of globules kind of coming out of it. It's almost like it's been cast uh, in a kind of cast and it's not properly, um, uh, got solid yet so that's one of the theories put forward by Joseph Davidovitz that perhaps these were actually cast and they were not uh, carved from solid rock you can just see that here you see it's almost like it could be unfinished but it's parts of it would be missing it's, it's a very bizarre one this one particularly and this is just an image um, that was from a video about this which suggests they could have been cast in harder rock but they're all different shapes and different sizes. Some of them aren't perfectly spherical. Uh, this shows you um, an artist's impression of how this would have happened. And again, if you take the road towards Finca 6 from Palma Norte, I believe heading north or northwest, there's me inspecting some broken parts of spheres just off the side of the road, you know, just bizarre. It's just like massive blocks here. They've all, the, all these ones have been broken open and split. And you can see another one here, which is, kind of looks like it's unfinished or it's a knock, an incomplete cast. One here that's been split completely in two. And uh, this just shows you the, all of the ones there uh, from that particular spot. And we, did, we were just with Manuel and we just stopped and had a look. Um, I, I made a bunch of videos about these you can see on YouTube. This one's much more granite-like, very hard, very hard rock, different type of uh, structure. This one actually has a very interesting cut in it, like it's, they've tried to cut it open, but obviously they couldn't quite manage it unless it was part of the original design. And this is also one of the ones which looks like it's been cast. Very interesting. And then interestingly, right there is, uh, this is like a slice, they've just sliced like a cheese slice out of one of the spheres uh, and placed it there so you can get a sense, it's almost like a monument uh, then placed in concrete to the megalithic sphere builders. But it's Finca 6, this is the real, this is the major site that everyone goes to. When I went there uh, in 2012, there wasn't any uh, information center. You didn't have to pay, you just wander in there. There were still, you know, farming bananas there. These are some of the artifacts that were found here that were on display at um, the Museum of San Jose. But there were two major mounds here uh, made of boulders and trape tra trapezoid access ramps, almost like small pyramids really. 
Uh, and on these mounds, presumably, lived the most important leaders, or the Kakik, the chieftain, and the shamans. So this was a site, this was an ancient site, a settlement, with the spheres, all in situ in interesting or, uh, locations and uh, orientations, within this complex. And this is just a, a rough outline of the complex, there's not too much... Um, to really see there, I mean, this is where some of the spheres are. They're not exactly, they weren't exactly like this. They've been placed here um, for convenience. There's some spheres over here, some up here. There were two here, marking the entrance to this mound. So it was like a ramp going up to a circular flat top mound. Same here. So probably two spheres here as well, but they've now gone. And so these, these, these I find quite interesting. And it suggests, if that is the case, if this is where the shaman or the leader lived, then walking between two of the spheres may have been correct. They may be uh, to show his status and prestige as the tribal leader. And yeah, it just shows you some of the stones that made up the mound, the smaller stones here. And you can see some of the earthworks that remain. Um, and this, oh, what's that, is it? This, uh, kind of made me laugh uh, when I was just just filmed this with my phone when I was there I just couldn't believe there's just like a train of bananas go by you when you just sort of hang around there and they were just going right next to the stone spheres right next to these ancient sacred site um, and I thought that was quite an interesting thing to see how bananas are actually uh, produced before they end up in our morning smoothies and again, this is one of the fields. There's me half naked over there. You don't need to look at that. These are some of the spheres that have been placed uh, in, a, in an area. These aren't necessarily in the exact location. Um, but some of them are at this site, which we'll look at in a moment. Again, I've given the exact coordinates here. So if you're interested, you can visit the site. The Chiriqui period, which is 800 to 1500 AD, saw these populations grow in size and complexity. Uh, hierarchical societies uh, who exercised power over the territories caused much um, conflicts with other chiefdoms. This was apparently, officially, the height of the spear making, although they could have easily been incorporated from an earlier culture, which I think is much more likely. In the 16th century, Contact occurred with the Spanish, uh, and they built their first capital in Cartago in 1563. The original inhabitants of the Dicui Delta uh, vanished soon after, either got killed off, put into slavery, or uh, ended up uh, dying from disease. These ones, in a different field at Finca 6, are actually in situ. They're still buried in the ground, and you can see these troughs and mounds here, uh, which were part of the ancient site. Here's another one that's still in situ. So these, some research has been done on this. This is now the visitor centers that's now being created. Uh, this wasn't here when I went there. They've just started to build this in 2012. So now it's an official UNESCO World Heritage Site. They have a display within there as well now uh, with some of the smaller spheres on display and some other artifacts that were found at the site. Um, and we'll look shortly at the way some of these were laid out. But before we do, I want to show you some other uh, areas where some of the spheres are. This is called Rancho El Silencio. And here is actually, you have to go down a dirt track for about half a mile uh, and then wander into the jungle. And then you come across this one. And this is actually the largest one ever found. Uh, this is, I think, nine or 11, nine, was it 10 feet wide, just over 10 feet wide when it was complete. But it's been chipped away. Parts of it have been broken off. And you can actually see the sign here. It used to be important until they kind of did this to it. But I think they're kind of, they've, they've built this up now. All of the spheres have become part of a World Heritage site with the World Heritage status to protect that. Um, and here's a couple of researchers. This is actually the sphere I was at, another photo of it. This is another one. I'm not sure if that's been moved or that was part of the one I saw. There's another area, another house. This is where some of the local um, archaeologists and local um, missionaries and others stay. It's like an open house for people to stay there. And within the grounds there, some of the spheres have been moved uh, and placed to protect them. Some of these ones are very interesting. This is, again, not too far from Finca 6, about three or four miles from Finca 6. Interesting thing about this, this one here is that it's got some wonderful carvings on it. Uh, and you can't really see it too clearly, but there's spiral carvings here. 
And there's even carvings of this, this shape here with all the sails going up. It's actually a boat, like a seafaring boat carved onto one of the spheres with sails, with people on the ship, the spirals around the other side. It's some kind of message in stone. And you can see other shapes of it here. I, don't, I couldn't find a good illustration of it to bring into the lecture, but you can Google it and you should be able to find it. Uh, there should be one somewhere online. But I just found, just seeing these original stones was really impressed me that indeed, they're not just all abstract, they're not just all simple spheres, they've actually got messages. And I believe Ivor Zapp and George Erickson are correct uh, where they are part of a navigational system for this part of the world because it's a very thin strip of land in that part of Costa Rica between the Atlantic and the Pacific. This is me looking very happy. I found one in someone's garden. I then asked them for permission to go in there, um, so I kind of got caught. This is me and Manuel looking all happy. Um, but this, you know, there, if you just walk around, look over fences, you see spheres in people's gardens in, in Palma Sur, which is just south. Uh, this is where, where you stay. There's a few hotels and shacks and things like that you can stay in. As we were driving around, we saw more of these. And next to this Italian restaurant, so we have a Chinese and an Italian restaurant with spheres at the entrance. Um, and these are the ones um, that were in that garden I just showed you. But that, these are the ones here. But these, this is Finca Six. This is where we were. So this is actually we're jumping back here because I want to look at some of the ideas about their orientation and about their placement in the landscape and it's believed this is actually one of the ones that was just buried deep underground they did some uh, um, uh, ground penetrating radar to locate some of them but if you look at these you can see that in certain configurations across the landscape and this has caused uh, quite um, confusion as to what these could have been used for Some are aligned perfectly north-south, going in, um, you know, sort of marking, you know, where they are on the land. And I believe, you know, they could be, if they're marking north-south and if they're astronomically aligned, some of them, it could suggest, and if they're marking the constellations, well, it could suggest they were indeed trying to understand the heavens. They were trying to understand where they were on Earth and they could have even been part of a global survey by the very ancient people, probably the Viracochas and the Quetzalcoatl people who were traveling around. We know in boats on their rafts of serpents. Um, and I, I believe this could be part of that. There's no evidence for this. It's very vague. Even the traditions and the legends and the folklore of this part of the world has been more or less wiped out with only 1% of indigenous Costa Ricans still living there. Here's some other ones that were in certain alignments. Uh, and placements within uh, Finca 6. This was recorded in 1943, shows you the sizes of them as well. Uh, but generally it's believed that they were following patterns, and this is the quote on one of the signs there, one of the recent signs they put up. They could have been related to the movement of the sun and other heavenly bodies indicating significant times of the year related to agricultural cycles and rituals. In a simplistic terms, I believe that was part of their purpose. But I believe there could have been something else going on here, a much larger perspective when travelers and navigators were actually marking specific parts of the planet. We already saw this earlier. So that's a general overview of the spheres of Costa Rica. We know that there's a lot more going on there than we may realize. There may be other elements we're not aware of. When I was there, I did some dowsing and found that there were energy lines connecting these up but not enough are in situ to do a proper analysis, unless more are discovered, of course, to try and understand their exact purpose. But to me, they're one of the enigmas of the ancient world, and they're very, very interesting and worth investigating. And visiting Costa Rica is always a good idea because the beaches and the food are excellent. There's other spheres that have been found in the world. These are some uh, natural spheres that have been found in Bosnia, obviously the ones on the top of Costa Rica. These are in Bosnia. This is a young Semir Samos Manigic. Um, these are about 100 miles from the so-called uh, Bosnian pyramids. And they're promoted, uh, it's this area here. This is it's this area here where the pyramids are. It's this area up here. I went to visit these, uh, 100 uh, kilometers north of Sarajevo. Um, one has been moved to a local town square, which you can see in the next slide. Uh, most of them are found in a place called Grab, um, in the immediate vicinity of Zavidovici. 
uh, and 15 uh, intact and 20 half spheres have been found here. Some are up to two meters wide. Some are only 50 centimeters wide, but it does appear they're natural. They're very irregularly shaped. There's my friend Matt who I went there with. Um, they're very irregularly shaped. They're sort of popping out of the, the hillsides. Um, and unfortunately, well, not unfortunately, but I believe they're natural. Um, there's many have been found. There are, even Robert Schock went to investigate these and being a geologist, he realized that they were probably natural and they were just naturally formed in that way. There's even some have been found in Serbia. The interesting thing about these, although they're probably natural, there's some very interesting carvings have been found on these. This was discovered only in 1974 but in 2001, a group of researchers discovered 10 more spheres. Uh, and one of them had inscriptions, which is the one here, which matched the star constellation of Cepheus and Cygnus. Um, and so this is very, very intriguing that this would be the case. So, oh, just over a meter wide and weighs about three tons. Italy as well, there's a couple of spheres have been found here. Uh, this was actually stolen, unfortunately. Uh, it was quite a task to steal that. Uh, 90 centimeters across, um, it was stolen in 2009. Um, and it was owned by uh, a certain farmer who discovered this on his land. Uh, but no one knows what's happened to it. So these, these have quite an effect on people, They're so much so they even want to steal them. Even in Sardinia, we have the famous Monte Accodi pyramid up near Porto Torres, um, near Sassari. And this is the stone kind of egg shape more than a sphere. It's now been broken, but it's got cut marks on it. And I talk more about this in more detail in my lecture called Island of the Giants, looking at the ancient island of Sardinia. But this could have been an omphalus stone. This could have been the center point, a very important, um, much like the Delphi Oracle stone um, of Greece. Even in France, uh, some have been discovered and just three or four in a certain town, but they seem to be natural formations popping out of the mountainside. And this does happen, much like the egg stone we find on Glastonbury Tor. New Zealand's Muraki boulders, these are found on the beaches, beautiful beaches apparently. Uh, my friend and colleague uh, Freddie Silver went to visit these recently, just the last couple of weeks ago. But they are concretions uh, and they you know, have been formed over millions of years, buried in mountains uh, you know, with water flowing over them. They're 40 kilometers south of Omaru in New Zealand. And they seem to be car calcium carbonate spheres that have fallen out of cliff faces and rolled down into the water. And then you get this beautiful shaping occurs over many thousands or even tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years. But these have caused uh, much controversy. People uh, for a long time uh, in the early days believed they were kind of marbles of the gods. In China, these are called stone eggs, um, recently discovered uh, along, interestingly, with a copper sword at a construction site in Bandang Hill and Zhanglong Hill in Gonki Town in Hunan province. Uh, they, would make, they were discovered during uh, highway construction, digging foundations for the road. Um, and they think it's a stone egg mountain that they came from. And this is part of the tradition here. Um, but again, they were probably natural and they just came from the mountain and, and, were, and got shaped by the river water. We also have Champ Island up in the Arctic area of Russia, one of the small islands. And many of these stone spheres have been discovered here. Uh, Franz Josef Land um, discovered these uh, some years ago. Um, and again, these are formed through the ice and the, and the glaciers melting away. And you can see a few beautiful photos here of, you know, the sort of artistic landscape that they were found in. The, the mountains uh, behind them. There's also these mysterious ones. Uh, these are the only ones I can find. They've been uh, drawn all over now. Uh, these were found at Dimapur, Nagaland, India. Uh, and there's no information about these I can actually find, um, but they're there. So whether these were carved by some ancient culture or whether they were placed there um, uh, by nature, we don't know. Again, we, we saw this in uh, one of the other lectures I've done in this series. Uh, San Lorenzo in Mexico, part of the Olmec culture. This is on display at the San Lorenzo Museum. It's not a perfect sphere, but we know they could have easily made that sphere because they can carve these beautiful, perfect, colossal heads. 
Also in Mexico, some metallic kind of stone spheres, some stone mixed with metal, were found underneath uh, the pyramid of um, uh, Quetzalcoatl, I believe, in uh, Teotihuacan. Now, these aren't big spheres, but they are spheres and they were found at a very important site. This is a photo that uh, my good friend and colleague Cliff Dunning uh, sent me, and it shows you a sphere that was found at Copan in Honduras. Now, I've, I've been at Copan, I didn't see this in the museum or at the site, so this is really intriguing to me. And it's almost like a yin yang symbol carved on it, which is also very similar to the symbol of Hunab Ku, uh, which is a traditional ancient Mayan symbol. Rapa Nui, uh, Easter Island, we have uh, the famous um, uh, stone egg shapes or stone spheres on one of the coasts. And this is believed to be um, the omphalus or the navel of Easter Island, the most important part of the island itself. And so there are probably more of these around the world. Uh, and there's even this one, which is a, a modern one in Quincy, Massachusetts, uh, which I couldn't help but try and push off its pedestal when I was there a few years ago, not too far from where my good friend Jim Vieira lives. So that's an overview of this quite strange phenomenon of stone spheres found around the world, including modern ones. And it's worthy of more investigation, but to me, especially the stone spheres of Costa Rica, it is really worthy of more investigation. If you get a chance to visit them, you get to see one of the mysteries of the ancient world. So thank you very much for listening.